Every NFL offseason, one of the big stories is the NFL Top 100 because it's usually really terrible. They usually leave out some guys that definitely shouldn't have been there, or you'll have situations where there's guys that are ranked way too low like we saw this year, or players that shouldn't be there like a Bobby Wagner at this point in his career ends up making the list. It's always a mess because the players vote on it. It's kind of a popularity contest, similarly to the Pro Bowl. So today, I took the liberty of creating my own top 100 list. Now, this video took a very long time to make, both with the graphics as well as coming up with the list. This is not an easy thing to do, but I think it came out really, really nice. So if you guys could just hit that like button, it helps me out a ton, helps get this video out to more people. We are ramping up the uploads coming up this week. The first prospect spotlights are coming very soon. NFL draft stuff is picking up, and I'm very excited for what's coming next. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Underdog Fantasy. Use my code JWAC to get double your initial deposit up to $250. Awesome stuff that you got. They have some of their preseason bets where you can do the higher, lower for season win totals, for season player props. Definitely would recommend checking that out. And also check out my Patreon, which I will leave linked down below. For 5 bucks a month, you guys will get exclusive access to my draft board, draft guide, all my evaluations, prospect interviews, our fantasy league, and much, much more. So if you guys are interested in that, be sure to go check out the Patreon. Well, let's start this off with the number 100 player that ended up making the cut. And that is going to be Cleveland Browns guard Joel Batonio. Now, at this point, Batonio is definitely on the downward trend of his career. He's not the same player he used to be but he's still coming off a pretty good year. Cleveland has done a very nice job of building that interior offensive line with Batonio, Pochich, and Teller. All three of them could have had a case here. Batonio is the only guy that did make it. I like what he showed. He still has that run blocking. He's still a nasty blocker, and I think he has done enough. Graded out pretty well last year with PFF, despite having a bit of a down year from his standards. I would put him still in my top 100 it, this was a very close spot. Quinn Miners from the Broncos was right here. Sam Cosme, uh, Buda Baker. There were quite a few guys that were in the mix here for this number 100 slot. But Joel Batonio ends up taking it, and he is the number 100 player in the NFL, in my opinion. Number 99, we have Aline McNeil, a player that did not make the NFL top 100, that 100% should have. He's coming off a career year for the Detroit Lions, where he was dynamic for this defensive line. He did a really nice job of showing his pass rush upside, which we hadn't really seen a ton of that up to this point in his career, and he graded out very well as a run defender. This was a Lions defensive line that coming into the year a lot of people had a ton of questions about, and Hutchinson had a great season, but Aleem McNeil had a very impressive season, and he did enough to get himself into my top 100. He graded out as one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL last year, and now I think he's going to have an even bigger season because defenses are going to have to account for DJ Reader. He could be in for a monster season for Detroit this upcoming year. Really liked what he showed last year, and he is my number 99 player. The number 98, we've got Aaron Rodgers. Now, I know a lot of people were upset that he made the NFL Top 100. To an extent, I get it. To another extent, I think he probably should have still gotten it. Aaron Rodgers is still one of the best players in the NFL when he's healthy. We see the clips coming from camp. I still think he's got it. The Jets, if he stays healthy, are a legit Super Bowl contender. He is a Hall of Fame talent. He's got elite arm strength still. If you got 60% of what we saw from his MVP seasons, I still think that's a top 100 player in the NFL. Aaron Rodgers should most definitely be on your top 100 lists. I know the injury. That is why he's so low on this list. Barely made the cut, but I did want to show some love to Aaron Rodgers because when he's on the field, there's no question he's probably a top 25 player in the league. So Aaron Rodgers coming down at the list at number 98. Hopefully he can stay healthy because this Jets team, as you'll see, they've got some talented players that are going to make some really interesting uh, noise this upcoming year. At number 97, we've got Marshawn Lattimore. Maybe a bit low. Um you know, he's been in trade talks, don't really know what his market is, not coming off the greatest season in the world, but I still think he's one of these top 
boundary corners in the NFL. The Saints secondary is an absolute disaster outside of him and Tyron Matthew. And I think Marshawn Lattimore is still a very good player. He's still got that stickiness and coverage, still moves very well, good speed. Uh, and he always makes sure to show up for that Tampa game against Mike Evans. Big fan of Marshawn Lattimore. Still think he is a top 100 player. I've got him coming in at number 97. At number 96, we've got Trevor Lawrence, a guy that just got a new contract. Um, There's some quarterbacks that didn't make the list. Uh, Jared Goff didn't make the list. Tua didn't make the list. Uh, Trevor Lawrence did. I think people that pay attention to the box scores, they're missing out. Trevor Lawrence has been a very good quarterback. We saw it just two years ago, one of the largest comebacks in playoff history that he did a incredible job. And before an injury, um, there was a chance at Jacksonville. They were close in that Kansas city game, in the divisional matchup. Uh, Trevor Lawrence has great arm talent. He's still very accurate with the football. Uh, the turnovers were a bit high last year, but the whole offense in Jacksonville was a complete mess. I still think Trevor Lawrence is a top 100 player. He's still low because he didn't have the greatest season in the world, but I'm very curious to see what he's going to do. They got him some new weapons in Gabe Davis, Brian Thomas Jr. I liked what I saw from him last year, and there are a lot of plays where he had Calvin Ridley open, and Calvin Ridley just couldn't come down with the football. Bad hands. I think that might be an addition by subtraction for Jacksonville this upcoming year, to be completely honest. I still think Trevor Lawrence is one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the league, I've got him at number six, or at number 96, excuse me. Uh, number 95, uh, Vita Vea from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Pretty, uh, I don't want to say basic player, but he's not doing too much. But what he does is he stuffs the run at an absolutely elite level. He's one of the best nose tackles, pure nose tackles in all of football. He just knows how to close the gaps in the run game, penetrate, and make stops in the backfield. But he also does offer a little bit as a pass rusher. He's an absolute freak athlete who has been everything Tampa wanted when they drafted him back in 2018, I believe. He's been fantastic and a key staple for this defensive line. I've got him at number 95. At number 94, we got a trend on receivers coming. Uh, a lot of wide receiver twos, I would say, in this range here. Jalen Waddles at 94. I'm a little bit lower on skill positions and higher on some of the defensive guys. That's just the way that my mind works here. Jalen Waddle is an absolutely incredible talent at the wide receiver position. Maybe doesn't have the greatest size in the world, but he's got incredible quickness when breaking out of his routes, reliable hands, and elite speed. Jalen Waddle is one of the top receivers in the game. He's probably going to come in as a top 15 receiver for me. This is not a oh, you're low on Jalen Waddle. I'm high on Jalen Waddle when comparing him to the rest of the receivers. But when comparing him to the rest of the league, I've got him at 94. I still think he's maybe not the most physically gifted receiver, which is why I have him a little bit lower than some of these other guys. But I am a big fan of Jalen Waddle. I've got him at number 94. At number 93, we've got T. Higgins. Who knows what we're going to get from T. Higgins this year? We don't even know if he's going to be playing uh, very much for Cincinnati. Uh, contract situation that's all up in the air. But when T. Higgins is on the field, look, same thing with what we saw from um, Jalen Waddle. If he's a wide receiver one, if he plays for any other team, he's probably a wide receiver one on about 17 other teams in the league. I think T. Higgins is a fantastic wide receiver. He gets the nod over Waddle for me because I love his size. I love that he can win those 50-50 balls. He's got the speed as well to win downfield. Maybe not the route runner that Jalen Waddle is, but he is an incredible talent at the receiver position. I've got him at 93. I'm a big fan of T. Higgins and hoping that he can stay healthy this year. At number 92, we've got Puka Nakua from the Los Angeles Rams. An absolute revelation at the rookie spot last year. Uh, Cooper Cup didn't make the list just because he didn't stay healthy last year. Uh, but Nakua was absolutely incredible. His route running, his separation, his ability to find soft spots in zone coverage, his ability to make tough catches across the middle of the field, his ability to win down the field. Poka Nakua was every bit as good as 
you could have imagined a rookie receiver be. Broke the all-time receiving yards record for a rookie wide receiver. He was absolutely out of this world, and I think he has earned a spot to be a borderline top 10 receiver in the league because he was that good at creating separation, finding holes in the defense, and then making defenders pay. I am absolutely blown away with how good of a rookie season he had. I think he deserves a spot in this top 100. I've got him at number 92. Number 91, we got Devonta Smith. You could argue he could be higher than some of these other guys because he is a 1B to A.J. Brown. I love Devonta Smith. I think he has some of the best footwork of any receiver in the league. He has incredible hands as well, makes some incredible catches. He'll give you two or three just, oh, my gosh, how did he catch that moment every year? Devonta Smith is an incredible talent. He's got speed, very shifty route runner. I liked him a little bit more than Waddle when they were coming out of the draft. I think he has been a little bit better up to this point in his career as well. Uh, I got him at 91. Like I said, this is a lot of low-end wide receiver ones, um, but there's a big gap on wide receivers. I don't have very many of them on this list. So if they did make the list, pretty high on them. I'm a big fan of Devonta Smith. I got him at number 91. And number 90, we've got Tyler Smith out of Dallas. Um, He has been one of the best guards in football since the moment he stepped onto the field. The first round pick from Tulsa, was projected to be their future left tackle, Tyron Smith replacement. And he ended up starting at left guard for them as a rookie and was absolutely incredible for them. And he has been an all pro level guard since he came into the league. Great, a great pass blocker at that guard position, but he's got some run blocking upside as well. He moves very well as an incredible athlete. Really love what we've seen from Tyler Smith out of that guard spot. And he definitely deserved a spot on this list. I got him at number 90. Number 89, we are going to go to my Colts, Jonathan Taylor. Missed some time last year, but when he was on the field, he was dynamic. And we saw it in that Week 18 matchup against Houston. He still has that shiftiness, that contact balance, and that speed to win in the open field. And I still think he's one of the top receivers in the game. He's a willing blocker. He can make catches out of the backfield, even though that's not his game. And he is a electric runner with the ball in his hands. I think he is going to have an incredible season and with a full year in this offense, full training camp under his belt, and the dynamic attack of him and Anthony Richardson, I think is going to be awesome to watch. I got Jonathan Taylor coming in at number 89. At number 88, we go to Saquon Barkley out of Philadelphia. Barkley was good last year for the Giants when he was on the field. Missed some time, as he tends to do each and every year. But when Saquon is on the field, he is one of the best running backs in the league. He is incredibly shifty. He's got that contact balance. He's got incredible open field speed. And for an Eagles team that is very running back friendly with their protection up front, with their their guards and their ability to get into the second level, I think Saquon's going to have a career year in Philadelphia because they, we saw DeAndre Swift have a career year. We saw Miles Sanders have a career year. Neither of those guys are very good running backs, to be completely honest. Saquon Barkley is a dynamic runner who can bounce things to the outside, can run up the middle. He's going to be a bit of everything for this Eagles offense. I've got him at number 88. I think he's going to be incredible for the Eagles this year. At number 87, we're going to go to Montez Sweat. I heard a statistic. He is the first player in NFL history to lead two teams in sacks in the same season. Led the commanders in sacks got traded to the Bears, and then led the Bears in sacks. He is a very good edge rusher who really burst onto the scene for this Bears defense. His defensive line was absolutely garbage. They traded a second-round pick for him, and he was every bit as good as they could have hoped for. Now I think he's the clear number one option going into the year. He's got the quickness, but he also can convert speed to power as well. He's a good power rusher off the edge. Really like what we've seen from Montez Sweat up to this point. Um, he's a low end number one edge rusher, but he is a very good one at that. And I've got him at number 87 at number 86. We're going to go to Sam Laporta. One of the best rookie tight end seasons we've ever seen dynamic after the catch, which was something that not a lot of people were expecting to see from him. He moves really well in the open field, has great hands. He can run routes, and he's also a willing blocker up front. It was a big part of why Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery saw the amount of success that they did. Sam Laporta, 
one of my favorite players to watch in the NFL and a player that I'm going to be targeting pretty high in fantasy this year um, using that underdog code. So Sam Laporta at number 86, absolutely love it. I think he's going to be in for another huge year for Detroit. Two Lions have already been revealed so far. At number 85, we're going to go to Baltimore and go to Tyler Linderbaum. Now, he was a late addition to this. Linderbaum, when you look at some of the numbers, was absolutely incredible for this Ravens team. A guy that they drafted in the first round just a couple years ago out of Iowa didn't have the most amazing rookie season. And then he was absolutely incredible last year and was a huge part of why this run-heavy offense can work because he's such an athletic monster, because he gets into the second level, lays powerful blocks, is pancaking dudes left and right. And he's a very good pass blocker as well with a strong anchor. I definitely think he's got to be in this top 100. I got him at number 85. I think he's one of the top centers in the NFL. I definitely think he is well-deserved a spot uh, at number 85 on this list. At number 84, we're going to go to Nico Collins out of Houston. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, how do you have Nico Collins ahead of some of those guys that you mentioned? He's a mixture of a little bit of everything because he ran routes. He was very good with physicality, matched up well. He had speed to win downfield. I think he might have solidified himself as a top 10 receiver. I don't have Stephon Diggs on this list. I think Diggs had a really down year, and I'm pretty low on him going into this year. Nico Collins is the complete opposite. I was low on Nico Collins going into last year. I was like, if that's your wide receiver one, it's going to be a really rough day. Uh, He absolutely proved me wrong. The hands were incredible. The route running was great. The speed to win and separate down the field was very nice as well. And he's got the jump ball ability. He's the perfect wide receiver one. He's still a low end wide receiver one in my eyes, but I've got him at number 84. Was absolutely blown away with what he showed last year. I got him as one of the top receivers in football. Number 83, we got Garrett Wilson. Now, there's a few receivers that got left off this list. DK Metcalf, Terry McLaurin. I know people are going to be really upset about that. I need McLaurin, the thousand yard number is great. I need to see more consistency. He didn't have the most incredible year last year. Uh, Garrett Wilson, on the other hand, has had really poor quarterback play and he's put up really good numbers. I think he just offers a little bit more than those guys at the receiver position. He can win those jump balls, which we saw in that week one game where he made an unbelievable catch against Buffalo. He can win in the open field. He's shifty. He has great speed. He's got great hands. He's a great route runner, one of the best route runners and separators in the league right now. I I absolutely love Garrett Wilson. We see it every year. He He is a legit wide receiver one. And the only reason he's low is because he just hasn't put up the numbers because the quarterback play in New York has been so unbelievably bad. Garrett Wilson is going to be in for a massive year, I think, for the Jets. And I got him at number 83. And then at number 82, we got Mike Evans. Now, Mike Evans really impressed me last year. I thought that this could be, you know, the start that he starts to decline a little bit. He didn't. He didn't start declining. He had one of the better years he had and was a huge part of this offense. He still has some drop concerns from time to time, but he can run routes. He can win across the middle of the field. And he's just a reliable weapon. He's not going to do anything absolutely out of this world. But what he does, he does at an elite level. He is one of the best receivers in football for a reason because he's an elite route runner, because he has an elite understanding of creating space. And he's a physical receiver who can win at the catch point. Mike Evans is a first ballot Hall of Famer, no question in my eyes. And I still think he is pretty high in my top 100. I got him at number 82. One, we got Brees Hall. Now, this is the third Jets player that we've revealed so far. I think he's the best player on this offense right now. He's got some of the most electric open field speed of anybody in the NFL right now. He's very shifty. He's got good vision. And he can make catches out of the backfield, which... I think gives him the slight edge over a guy like a Saquon Barkley or Jonathan Taylor. I like his hands out of the backfield a little bit more than those guys. Even as a Colts fan, I really like what Jonathan Taylor has been up to this point in his career. Even after the injury, there were questions on what he was going to be able to do. He answered all those questions and he was their offense for a very large portion of last year. And I thought he was very impressive. I'm pretty high on Brees Hall going into the year. I think he's got like RB1 potential. 
very, very well could be an RB one. Uh, I got him ahead of guys like Bijan Robinson, stuff like that. Really liked what I saw from him. I've got him at number 81, number 80. We're going to go to San Francisco, talk about Charvarius Ward, very physical outside corner who gets away with a lot of that physicality, but he's a very good corner. I love physical corners. That's just the type of players that I favor. And he's an electric corner. He's got the movement abilities you like to see. He's very physical down the field, makes guys pay. You just don't throw the ball Charvarius Ward's way. One of the better corners in the NFL right now, and I've got him at number 80. I think he's going to continue what's been a very productive career for him so far. Number 79, we've got Quentin Nelson. Nelson has been good for the Colts. He hasn't been great, though. I, I will say that. Um, kind of been on a bit uh, after his rookie year, which his first three seasons in the league were like all-time good. Quentin Nelson hasn't been that good since then like an elite guy, but he's still been a very good guard who can pancake dudes left and right. He's an incredible run blocker and he's a good pass blocker as well. I think when you look, the offensive line has taken a bit of a hit since he came into the league. He's had a better season than he had two years ago. And I think another year in the Steichen offense, we could see him getting back to that all pro level. I still think he is one of the top guards in football. I've got him at number 79. Number 78, we're going to go to DJ Moore, a guy that at the time recording this, I don't know if he's going to be named in the NFL Top 100. That's just absolutely ridiculous to me. DJ Moore is a very, very good wide receiver that has been absolutely incredible up to this point. Um, Really came on the scene last year for Chicago, who did a little bit of everything. He won the 50-50 balls. He made plays happen, a very good after-the-catch player, um, he's got great hands. He can win in the end zone. Like DJ Moore is one of the top receivers in the NFL right now. Absolutely shocked that he is not getting the love that he deserves. Um, I got him at 78. Like I said, there's a large gap from one receiver to the next. Uh, DJ Moore is a very great wide receiver one. And I think he could have another even better year because defenders are going to have to focus on Odunze and Keenan Allen. I've got him at 78. Huge, huge fan of DJ Moore. At number 77, we've got Frank Ragnow, another one of just the most reliable centers in the NFL. Seems like he has been at the top of the list for the last few seasons, and nothing's really changed. He's a really good pass blocker in Ben Johnson's offense, does a good job run blocking, moves well, physical. Not much more to say about Frank Ragnow, just consistently great. I've got him at 77. Number 76, we got Justin Matabuiki coming off a career year, getting a big contract extension. You loved what we saw from him and Mike McDaniel or Mike McDonald's offense last year, where he just did a really our defense. Geez, uh, he did a really good job in that defense of being that that guy that was getting pressure. I want to say he had eight to ten sacks last year. Was a dynamic pass rusher from that three tech position. Which if you've got a dynamic three tech. It changes the way your defense can run and operate. Justin Matabuiki was that for them and was absolutely incredible. Absolutely loved what he showed for the Ravens last year. I think he could be in for another really big season. I've got him at number 76. Number 75, we've got Derek Stingley Jr., a guy that I was a bit low on coming into the year because he got injured. We hadn't really seen a lot from him since his freshman year at LSU. Uh, Took off the COVID year did not look the same after that ended up going and had a sauce gardener. I was like, okay, he was very good last year for Houston though. He showed what we thought he could show the physicality, the movement, the speed, what we saw from him as a true freshman. It was there for him. And Houston last year was a big part of this defense. He is a legit CB one at this point and really impressed me last year. I'm very excited to see what he's going to be able to show this upcoming year for Houston. Another year in D'Amico Ryan's system, another offseason fully healthy. We could see him crack in the top 50 next year if he really has a big season again. I've got him at number 75. At number 74, we're going to go to Trayvon Diggs. Now, a guy that missed a lot of last season due to an ACL tear. But when Trayvon Diggs was on the field, he was having a career year. He was doing things that people didn't think he was going to be able to do. And that was 
he was making plays on the defensive side of the ball that weren't interceptions. He was really good in coverage. He wasn't giving up a lot of space. He wasn't biting on as much as we had seen. Trayvon Diggs had a really, really good year last year for Dallas when he was on the field, and he has been progressively getting better from where he has been. I'm really I'm really excited to see what he can do. We know that he's going to be fully healthy going into the year. Is a really good Cowboys secondary with a completely new defensive staff. So what is Diggs' role going to be? I still really like what he showed. I've got him at number 74. Number 73, we got Xavier McKinney, one of the best safeties in the league. I wasn't going to put him on this list. And then when you look at the numbers, you're like, my gosh, what did he not do for the Giants last year? Very good in coverage. Uh, was great on the back end. Making plays happen over the top. He has the fluidity in his hips, the movement to make plays happen. He also was very good at crashing as a run defender. He was a good tackler. I mean, he did everything well, and Green Bay paid a lot for him. And I think they kind of had to because he was that good. They had a lot of questions around their safety room. I think Xavier McKinney is going to answer a lot of those. Really, really love this Xavier McKinney pickup for Green Bay. I've got him at number 73 because he is just an all-around dual-threat safety that can crash the run, play coverage. Really love this pickup. I got him at 73. At 72, we've got Jalen Hurts. This one is a bit controversial. Jalen Hurts is one of the most polarizing quarterbacks in the league at this point because I still think he's a good quarterback. He makes some good plays. He's got some arm talent, but... I don't think he's like any that top five quarterback that people thought he was last year. There were some legit concerns last year. This offense completely fell apart. The defense also completely fell apart. But I feel like I'd love to see him. If you swapped him and Tua, I'd love to see. Or if you put him somewhere where the weapons aren't, aren't what the Eagles have, I'd love to see that because Hurts has the talent. He's got a good arm. He's pretty accurate with the football, can make plays happen with his legs. He's an incredibly strong and powerful runner, but really disappointed in what we saw last year. That being said, still probably a top 10 quarterback in the league because of his dual threat abilities, but he could be steadily falling down that list. If he has another down year, I think there could be some panic in Philadelphia. Number 71, we're going to go to Derwin James, another just dynamic safety for the Los Angeles Chargers. It does a little bit of everything. Great box player, though. Great uh, at coming downhill, defending the run. And he moves very well. He's a guy that has not been able to consistently stay on the field and be healthy. But when he is healthy, he has been towards the top of the NFL in terms of safety play. So he's got him at 71. I think he's an elite player, and I think he deserves a spot on this list. At number 70, we're going to go to DeForest Buckner, the most underrated player in all of football. I don't understand how there, there are top 10 defensive tackle lists out there, and DeForest Buckner doesn't make the list. He is one of the best pass-rushing defensive tackles in all of football. He does a very good job at stuffing the run. He's got pass-rush moves. He's a very good athlete. What more do you want? Yes, he could improve as a run defender, but that's what, that's what Grover Stewart's there for. Buckner does everything you want him to do, and he does it at an elite level. He is a absolutely dynamic player, and I don't get how he's so underrated. I've got him at 70. I just – I don't even know – again, I don't even think he made the top 100 list, if I if I recall. So, yeah, uh, DeForest Buckner is number 70 for me. Uh, number 69, the coveted 69th spot. That went to Marlon Humphrey. Um, I, I like Humphrey. He, he's another guy that – has dealt with a lot of injuries in his career, but when he's on the field, he does a very nice job. This is a Ravens secondary that was absolutely elite last year with Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams. Marlon Humphrey was a big part of that. You need that lockdown CB1, and when Humphrey's on the field, he has been every bit as good as, ad as, good as advertised for the Ravens. Moves well, he's physical, got speed. I love Marlon Humphrey. He's my number 69 player. Number 68, we've got Jordan Mileta out of uh, Philadelphia. Don't know why I blanked on the Eagles for a second. He's been a very reliable left tackle. A incredible story. We've all heard the story up to this point where kind of picked up football as a rugby player and 
He's really developed into being one of the top left tackles in the NFL. He's an incredible athlete at the tackle position. He's strong. He's powerful. He's got quick feet. Doesn't lunge. There's a lot to really like there with Maleta, and I think he is going to continue as one of the better tackles in football. He can be a really good run blocker, can be a good pass blocker. I got him at 68. At 67, we've got Jordan Love, the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Truthfully, this is just the beginning. This is where I this is his floor right now. This is the absolute lowest I could rank him. I am a very big Jordan Love believer. If you guys followed any of my stuff, you would know. Jordan Love was a guy that I was incredibly high on. I, I think he's probably going to be a top 30 player at this time next year because the things that he did the second half of last year, especially in that wild card game, I was like, yeah, Green Bay did it again. His ability to make those deep throws off platform, the sidearm delivery, Mahomes Rogers esque I mean, he was doing some things that – we haven't seen very many quarterbacks be able to do. Um, he is just an incredible talent at the quarterback position. He's athletic. He's got the arm talent. He's very accurate with the football as well. He makes good decisions. I really like what Jordan Love is going to be. I got him at 67. And at number 66, we've got C.J. Stroud. Both of those guys, I think, are probably going to be jumping up the ranks. Stroud, I think, could have a bit of a sophomore slump, though. Um, you know, last year was kind of a perfect storm for him where he really didn't play any good defenses. He really had an easy schedule. That being said, he was incredible last year, and I'm not going to take that away from him. The arm talent was there. His accuracy was elite. One of the most accurate quarterbacks with the football in the entire NFL, which if you can make all the right throws, I mean, hey, you're you're on a good career trajectory he just did everything right for the Texans last year. The Texans seem to have found their franchise quarterback, an accurate quarterback who, look, I'm a Colts fan. It's really hard not to like C.J. Stroud, the football player. I mean, he does some awesome things. This offseason has been pissing me off a little bit as a Colts fan talking about Zaire Franklin. But that being said, C.J. Stroud, 66, was elite as a rookie last year, and you can only expect him to get better. At 65, we've got Derek Henry. Now, Henry, it's weird because he probably had one of the worst seasons of his of the last few years. And he still had like was still like top five in the league in rushing yards. He hasn't really lost a step. And I don't really worry about Derrick Henry losing a step, to be completely honest, because that's not his game. He's not this burner who's gonna be quick to the outside. Like, yeah, he likes to bounce bounce it to the outside. He's a power runner. Get him the ball. Put your head down. He's going to beat you. I'm glad that the Colts don't have to deal with him twice a year anymore because he gave them nightmares every single season. He's an incredible running back, still one of the best running backs in all of football. I'm lower on the running back position as a whole. That's why I have him at 65th and not 28th. But I still think he's going to be able to bring a lot to this Ravens offense that they haven't really had. Health could be a concern because he's getting up there in age, but he is a very good player still. I've got him at 65. 64, we've got Zach Martin, um, still just been a dynamic guard. Got paid big money last year after holding out of camp, and you, you see why. He got paid the big money. He is so productive for the Cowboys every single year. His movement is incredible. He's just so athletic. He is going to get into the Hall of Fame probably first ballot. Uh, he's that good at the um, at the guard position. He has been so productive for the Cowboys. I've got him at number 64. I, I just don't really – there's not much more to say. Zach Martin has just been incredible. At 63, we've got DJ Reed, the other Jets corner. Now there will be – the other guy will be on this list, trust me. DJ Reed is probably a cornerback one on 20 other teams. He has been so dynamic for the Jets um, as that number two corner, matching up against number two receivers. He's quick. He tackles. He makes plays happen. He's great in both man and zone. Does everything you want at the cornerback position. I got DJ Reed at 63. I think he is an elite talent, and he is a big part of what makes his Jet secondary work. He's at 63. At 62 – we got Christian Wilkins. Cannot believe the Dolphins let this guy go. Um, he's dynamic, and 
He's not the greatest run defender in the world. From that three-tech spot, though, he is a fantastic pass rusher. He wins with power, wins with speed, wins with finesse. He knows how to get in the backfield, knows how to penetrate gaps. He knows how to create space and leverage. Like, really, really good defensive tackle. And when he signed with the Raiders, I mean, now you're pairing him with a young Tyree Wilson who's still got loads of potential. And then Max Crosby, this Raiders defensive line is going to be really fun next year, particularly on the pass rushing front. If you've got Wilkins and Crosby rushing, offensive lines now are going to have to, they're going to have to really game plan for this defense. And that's a great thing for Raiders fans. And I think Christian Wilkins was a steal. I got him at 62. At number 61, we've got Devon Witherspoon. Uh, one of the best rookie cornerback seasons I think we've seen. The funny thing about this list, I have both Devon Witherspoon and Jalen Carter on this list. We'll get to that later. The defensive rookie of the year didn't make my list. Will Anderson Jr. did not get my final. He didn't make it uh, in my top 100, which is pretty wild. Devon Witherspoon played a lot in the slot for this team. One of the best run defending corners in the league. That's why he was my cornerback one ahead of Christian Gonzalez. His ability to come downhill and defend the run. He is a human hit stick. This guy made incredible tackles. Now, he doesn't have the greatest speed or the greatest size in the world, excuse me, but he has the speed, he's got the quickness, and was elite in coverage. That Monday night game against the Giants, Everyone, when everyone saw it, everyone's like, yeah, Deval Witherspoon is that dude. I got him at 61. I think the sky is the limit for what he could be. And now he's got one of the best defensive minds in the NFL and Mike McDonald, yeah, it's going to be really fun to watch this Seattle secondary go to work. At number 60, we've got Javon Holland. Really good safety, great coverage, good tackler. The safety position is pretty stacked in the league at this point. It's a very great, um, this is a very deep, talented NFL. Holland does a lot of things really well. Um, I don't think he's... I think I have him as like a top five safety still, but that being said, I, I have a few guys a little bit higher than him. Not really a ton to say about Javon Holland. I think this is around the range that he ended up actually making it in the NFL top 100 officially. So not too much to say that hasn't already been said. Good tackler, great mover in space, comes downhill, defends the run, does a little bit of everything for you. I've got him at number 60. At number uh, 59, We've got Jalen Carter. So, yeah, Jalen Carter is unbelievable. He was doing things for this Eagles team last year. They were like, wait, this guy's a rookie? Um, he's incredibly powerful. He's incredibly quick. He's got pass rush moves. Like, the NFL overthought it. Like, I get it. But he, he he's so freaking good all, on the interior. I mean, he was the best – He. After studying all the defensive tackles for this upcoming draft, he is still the best defensive tackle prospect I've ever seen up to this point because of his quickness, his run defending ability, his elite pass rush ability, his size. Like he does everything elite. And I've got him at 59. I think he is going to be incredible for Philadelphia uh, and potentially could earn defensive player of the year votes next year. At 58, we've got Trey Hendrickson. One of the most underrated players in the league, in my opinion. He's been great since he signed with the Bengals. He's been one of the most productive edge rushers in all of football. He's been really good. I mean, he's not the most athletic player in the world, but he makes plays happen. He's got pass rush moves. He's got some uh, nice uh, bend around the edge, and he's been productive. Defends the run pretty well for a defensive end as well, but really good pass rusher. There's a lot of pass rushers around this sort of tier. I got him at 58. I think Trey Hendrickson is very underrated and uh, definitely earned this spot. At 57, we got Dak Prescott. Do I think the Cowboys should give him $60 million? No. But do I think Dak Prescott's a very good quarterback? Absolutely. I think he's one of the most underrated and yet overrated players at the same time. Very hard to figure out Dak. And like, I think he needs a change of scenery personally because. He had an incredible season last year, and then he went back to throwing interceptions in the playoffs, which really sucked. But, I mean, he does play the quarterback position really well. He's smart with the football. He's got arm talent. He has gotten better as he's gotten older. He's just gotten smarter. He's gotten 
quicker in his reads. I love Dak Prescott. I think he should. If I'm Dallas, I would give him the money, but I wouldn't give him 60 mil a year. But I don't think he's going to end up getting the money from Dallas. Very interesting situation. I've been thinking about doing a video on this if, if this continues, but I got him at 57. I like Dak. I think he is a top half the league quarterback. And I think he's going to have another good year in Dallas. Number 56, we got Jair Alexander, one of the most fun players in the league. I wish I could explain this. He's the Tyrese Halliburton of the NFL. Don't ask for further explanation on that one. I can't explain it. Really good corner, though. I mean, one of the few corners that I've seen give Justin Jefferson hell. Like, he has done a really good job of, like, putting Justin Jefferson in a torture chamber and, like, yeah, I'm going to lock you down. And he's done it. He's got some misses here and then, but he's got some health concerns. But when he's on the field, he's a very good cornerback. He's a very good mover. He's physical. He's aggressive. And I love that for my corners. Jair Alexander at 56. I absolutely love this for him. Number 55, we've got Minka Fitzpatrick. Really, really good safety. Uh, I think he's better in that free safety roaming role. He's really quick, really athletic. Got some good ball skills to him. That's where he thrives. They played him a little bit out of position last year because their safety room was a mess, but he's still one of the top safeties in all of football. I mean, he moves really well. He's got quick hips. He's a really strong tackler. He offers a lot at the safety position, and I got him at number 55. At number 54, we got Khalil Mack. This was a guy that, like, Really surprised. I'm truthfully surprised that he's still this good at this point in his career because usually with edge rushers, you would expect a little bit of a decline. Khalil Mack had an incredible year for the Chargers last year. Um, One of the best years he's had since he was in Chicago. I mean, he was quick. He still has that power. He's still got that crazy hands to like move offensive linemen and he was at the top of the league in sacks last year like Khalil Mack is a damn good edge rusher and I think he's underrated at this point in his career like he's still probably a top half the league edge rusher maybe in the top 10 still yeah Khalil Mack is at number 54 I really really like what he showed last year I think we'll see some more from him this year at 53 we got Christian Darisaw just got a major contract extension from the uh, Minnesota Vikings, and he's been every bit as good as advertised. A great run blocker, elite pass blocker for this team, a team that loves to pass the football. He's been one of the most sure left tackles in all of football. Like You know he's not giving anything up. Really smart football player, really good as a run blocker. Still has some work to do, but I think that's where he, um, where he needs to improve, but I still think he does a great job. In terms of pass blocking, he's at number 53. I definitely think he's one of the best left tackles in football right now. And he makes the almost makes the top 50. Number 52, Rashawn Gary. I think this is almost exactly where he made it on the NFL top 100. He is another guy that just like year in, year out, I think we sleep on how good Rashawn Gary is. And he continuously gets better, it seems like, each and every year. His speed, his power, his quickness, his bend, like he does a lot from that outside linebacker position. And he's been one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. Like his sack numbers haven't been elite, but he creates a ton of pressure. He gets into the backfield. Rashawn Gary is a really good player. I definitely think he is one of the top edge rushers in the NFL right now. And I got him at 52. I think a lot of people are sleeping on how good Rashawn Gary is. At 51, we got Jeffrey Simmons. Um, I like Simmons a little bit more than I like a guy like Buckner or I like a guy like Carter at this point. He is just a very physical, very nasty football player, which is what Tennessee has been. He's a really good three-tech who I think he's a better run defender than he is as a pass rusher. But if he's in a one-on-one situation, he's beating you every single time. He is getting into the backfield and he is getting a sack just about every time, or he's at least creating pressure. Jeffrey Simmons is a really good player. He does a lot of really good things for that defensive spot, and he can play in. He can play on the interior. He's very versatile on the defensive line for Tennessee as well. I got him at 51. I think he's a really, really good player, and I love what he's been for Tennessee, and he fits that culture perfectly. At number 50, we got Daniil Hunter, the newest Houston Texans edge rusher. 
he's still got it. I mean, the bend is elite. I think he's got some of the best bend of any edge rusher in all of football. He's still got that nasty quick first step, and he's got an array of pass rush moves to get into the backfield. He's still a top half of the league edge rusher, in my opinion. He's still a top 50 player. Very curious to see what he's going to look like in Houston. He has a homecoming for him. So, uh, him with Will Anderson Jr. Is he going to get the uh, right tackle and kind of get the focus of the defense, or is that going to Will Anderson? It's going to be really interesting. I really like Daniel Hunter, though. I love what he offers. was one of the best sack artists in all of football last year. I got him at 50. At 49, we got Derek Brown, maybe the most underrated player in the NFL. And, yeah, I'll stand by that. I think he might be the most underrated player in the NFL. I I want to say, I could be wrong on this. I want to say that he broke the record for tackles from a defensive tackle. Correct me if I'm wrong on the comments, but I think Derek Brown broke that record last year, and we all just kind of glanced over it. He is a tackling machine. He is one of the best run defenders in all of football. He is a elite. Uh, he's got really good athleticism, and he's a good pass rusher. Like, what is there not to like about Derek Brown? This is a Panthers team that doesn't have any other player on this list. Derek Brown deserves this spot on this list. He has been so good for this team. And I saw people saying he should go for a fifth round pick and a second in a trade. Absolutely ridiculous that they thought that that was the market. He's got more value than Brian Burns did, I think. Uh, Derek Brown is an elite player, and I, I got him in, at number 49. I love this guy. Number 48, we got Brandon Ayuk. Who knows? I'm recording this on Sunday the 28th. Who knows if he'll be a 49er then? Um, I think he's kind of become underrated in a sense. Uh, I think he was in like the 60s. I wouldn't say that. I mean, this guy was fantastic for San Francisco last year. Really good footwork, really good route runner, knows how to create separations, got good hands. I mean, he might have the best footwork, him and Devonta Smith and the NFL. Like, it's absurd, uh, his foot speed. Really like what Brandon Ayuk can be at the NFL level, though, um, or can be for any team. I think he's a true number one receiver. We saw it last year with San Francisco. I got him at 48. I think he's an elite weapon and an elite player. Number 47, we got Legereus Sneed. Um, there was some weird injury stuff that had come up. So – We'll see what that's all about, but I mean, he was fantastic for Kansas City last year. On the boundary, was moving with number one receivers, and was just hard to throw the football against. I was begging Chris Ballard to make a trade, get Legereus Sneed in Indianapolis. It didn't happen. He ended up in Tennessee, which really pissed me off, but nevertheless, he's a very good corner, really good speed, really good athleticism, uh, moves well. He's got ball skills. He's perfect for Tennessee. I got him at number 47. So we got Joe Tooney. Tooney has been, again, one of the best guards in the NFL. He's been very productive for Kansas City. Not even the best Kansas City offensive lineman on this list. They have been so good on the interior of their offensive line. But Tooney has been a big part of it. At that left guard spot, he completely changed this offense when they were able to trade for him from New England. He's been dynamic and ended up missing the Super Bowl. He is a very important part of this offense and one of the best guards in all of football. I think I got him as the second or third best interior offensive lineman in the league. I've got him at 46. Number 45, we got Jalen Ramsey. He's not the player he used to be, where he was probably a top five player in the NFL, but he's still a very good corner who's still got that athleticism, who's still got those ball skills and that physicality as a tackler that you look for. I mean, he was great. I mean, he missed some time last year for Miami came back, and was every bit as good as they could have hoped he could have been. So he's still one of the top corners in the NFL. I still think he's an elite player, and I got him at number 45. This is kind of where I think all of the – like I'm not going to say all these guys aren't truly elite, but this top 50, these are the true like superstars in the NFL, in my opinion. And I still think Jalen Ramsey is that. At number 44, we've got Jesse Bates. Uh, I've got him at safety three in the league incredible safety though. Don't get me wrong. Um, he was very good in coverage, took snaps in the slot last year, took snaps as a single high, took snaps in the box, plays everywhere. His ball skills were elite. And when we got to see him last year in Atlanta, he looked absolutely incredible for this defense. That was the best he's ever looked in his career was well worth the money. They paid him 
I was really impressed with what we saw from Jesse Bates last year. I got him at number 44. I think he is one of the top safeties in football right now. Number 43, we got Matthew Stafford. Uh, Still, in my opinion, I want to say this is exactly where the NFL Top 100 had him. Uh, Matthew Stafford is still an incredible quarterback. I want to say I have him at number five or six right now in terms of quarterbacks. He's that good. I mean, when he's healthy, which it, it's an if at this point, he he is a guy that can throw the ball at a million different angles. He's got incredible accuracy. He's got some of the best arm talent in the NFL. He's really, really talented. One of the best quarterbacks in the league. I think he's kind of become underrated at this point. While we're overrating guys like Justin Herbert, in my opinion, I think Matthew Stafford has been consistently one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And I got him at number 43. At number 42, we got Lane Johnson, another guy that's pretty close to where the NFL had it. Um, Best right tackle in football, one of them at least. Elite athlete, elite pass protector. Really, really good at getting to the second level as a run blocker as well. Does a lot of things really well for this Eagles team. He is the engine that kind of makes this offensive line go now that Jason Kelsey's gone. He's an elite player to me. I got him at 42. Uh, I think this is a uh, a franchise right tackle and an elite talent at his position. And number 41, we got Demario Davis. I don't have a lot of linebackers on here. I think this is the first linebacker. Demario Davis is still so good. His coverage is elite. He's an elite tackler. He's really smart, has an incredibly high football IQ. Demario Davis is a guy that I think has – kind of fallen under the radar from NFL fans because the Saints have been irrelevant for the last few seasons. He is still one of the top linebackers in the NFL. He moves well, and even though he's getting up there in age, he is still one of the elite talents at his position. I got him at number 41. At number 40, we've got Joshua Hines Allen from the Jacksonville Jaguars, a guy that really burst onto the scene, had a career year last year, and – I mean, there's not much to say. Uh, He was incredible for them last year. As a pass rusher, he really developed some more pass rush moves. He really had that quickness, that burst to get into the backfield. He was a good tackler. He's a strong player. Power, speed, quickness, pass rush moves. He's got it all. He's one of the top edge rushers in the NFL, and I've got him at number 40. At number 39, we've got Creed Humphrey the top center in all of football, in my opinion. I want to say I have him as the top interior offensive lineman. We'll come back to that at the end of the video. But Creed Humphrey is an elite player. I don't really think there's any question about it. This is a guy that, from the moment he drafted, was an all-pro pretty much. I mean, he has been so technically sound. He's been so physically gifted. He's been Everything Kansas City wants from that center spot, you've gotten in Creed Humphrey. He has been absolutely remarkable for them and as a top 40 player in the league. I got him at number 39. Number 38, we got Kyle Hamilton. Hamilton is a good safety. I, I really like what he showed last year. I don't think he's as dynamic in coverage to where he's almost like a third linebacker at times. But even in that role, he's an elite tackler. He doesn't have that sideline-to-sideline side ability. He's good in coverage. I wouldn't say he's an elite coverage player, but he's a great tackler. He moves well. He's got ball skills. Kyle Hamilton had a career year last year. You love to see they had a three safety sort of thing. He kind of played in the box a lot of it. Really great player though. Kyle Hamilton is one of the top 40 players in the league. I got him at 38. And at 37, I got Antoine Winfield. They're interchangeable. Pick your poison with either of them. I prefer Winfield. I think he's the best safety in football. The speed that he plays the game at, that he plays physically, he's really, really sharp. I think he's one of the best coverage players at the safety position, though. He moves well, can play in the slot, matches up with almost anybody, and he's got elite ball skills. It's absolutely absurd that he didn't make the Pro Bowl last year. He's a top 37 player. I got him I got him at 37. I just I can't believe that the NFL is sleeping on this guy. He is an elite talent. And he's my number 37 player in the league. Number 36, we got Amonra St. Brown. I love Amonra. I told you guys there was a big gap between wide receivers. I think from Nico Collins or from DJ Moore to Brandon Ayuk, that was like 40 spots almost. And then we had like 10 more. So receivers are top heavy. Uh, Amonra St. Brown, though, 
a guy that I really, really liked when he came out of USC. Um, you love the speed. You love the route running. He's just a really, really good football player. He's got reliable hands, knows how to get open, make himself available, and he has been incredible for this Lions offense. I've got him at 36. I've been really impressed with what he has shown up to this point in his career. At number 35, we've got Chris Lindstrom. This is the best interior offensive lineman in the NFL. Um he has been so good for the Atlanta Falcons, dating back a few years at this point. Uh, I want to say he was PFS highest graded guard last year. He's got the size, the quickness that you look for. He can pull in the run game and was a big part of the success of Arthur Smith's run game because you had a guard as good as Chris Lindstrom. He's a sure pass protector, and he did a good job of like helping Caleb McGarry out as well. I mean, this is a guy that is an elite talent at his position. I got him at 35. I think he is one of the best offensive linemen, period, in all of football. Number 34, we've got Denzel Ward, another just absolutely elite corner. Um, Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who was the number four pick in the 2018 draft. He has been fantastic for this Browns team. He's physical. He's fast. He can play off. He can play in press. Probably a zone guy. I like him a lot in that zone coverage role. He's got ball skills, reacts quickly. He's got quickness to close on the football. Everything you like from the corner spot, you kind of are getting from Denzel Ward. There's a really good corner group, though, in the NFL right now. There's some elite talents. I think Denzel Ward is a top five to six corner in football. I've got him at 34 and one of the best defenders on one of the best defenses in the NFL. At number 33, we've got Aiden Hutchinson. Loved what he showed last year. I mean, this guy was freaky. Um, the way that he just like took over games at times. You're like, you have to double him at times. He has elite bend. He has the quickness, the power, though. He is one of the most powerful edge rushers in all of football. He his burst and his ability to convert speed to power is elite. I mean, probably he not probably he should have been the number one pick over um, Trayvon Walker if they were going to go with an edge rusher. That's the route they should have gone. But that being said, Aiden Hutchinson has been fantastic in his role for the Lions, and absolutely love this guy. I got him at number thirty three. Number thirty two, we've got AJ Brown, one of the most physically gifted receivers that I think we have in the NFL. Um, the the guy has freakish size with speed. And his ability to just outbody and out physical everybody on the field. That's what AJ Brown is. He is an elite talent at the receiver position with great hands, great size, great physicality. And he's my number 32 player in the NFL. Number 31, we got Trent McDuffie. Uh, I loved McDuffie coming out of Washington. That was the first year that I had ever started to like watch film. McDuffie was like, it was Sauce Gardner and Trent McDuffie. And then I think I had um, – who did I have as CB3? It wasn't Stingley, uh, but I loved McDuffie. I thought McDuffie was a fantastic player, went to the Chiefs, and you knew he was going to be good from the second they drafted him. He was one of the best corners in the NFL last year. His reaction was really good. He's got the speed to play in the slot, very good in man-to-man situations. I mean, he was the reason they won that Super Bowl. Some of the plays he made in the Super Bowl – was absolutely crucial. He's one of the best corners in all of football, and it's a shame that the Chiefs, the rich just keep getting richer in the draft, and they just keep pulling these guys that everybody knows are good, and they end up getting them. They they did it again with Jaden Hicks this year. Um, Trent McDuffie at 31. This might even be low for him. I I absolutely love Trent McDuffie as a player. Uh, Number 30, we've got George Kittle. Um. I think he's kind of starting to take a bit of a regression. He's taking a bit of a dip, but he's still one of the best tight ends in football. What he offers in the blocking department is so important to this 49ers offense and the way they op- that he helps open up run lanes for them. It's so important for him. This is an offense that goes through George Kittle. His ability as a receiver is there. He has the, you know, you get him the ball. He can make plays happen. He's physical. He's powerful, hard to tackle in the open field, but he's an elite blocker as well. That's why he's at number 30. He is one of the best tight ends still in the league, even if he is starting to trend downwards. I mean, he's still a top 30 player right now, in my opinion. 
At number 29, we've got Andrew Thomas, a franchise left tackle who took a couple of years to really develop for the Giants. And then when he got on the field a couple of years ago, was an all pro, one of the best tackles in all of football. Didn't have the same production last year. Now, he wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. He's just really powerful. He's got good size, wide base, strong anchor, great in pass protection. And that's what this Giants team is was in desperate need of. And Andrew Thomas stepped up and became that for them. I love Andrew Thomas. I got him at 78. I think he's one of the best tackles in all football. And number 28, we've got Devontae Adams. I wanted to have Devontae Adams lower on this list. I feel like you could argue he's behind A.J. Brown. You could, ar- you could argue these things. I can't, though. Devontae Adams, bad quarterback play in Vegas, and he has still been so productive. He is still one of the best route runners in the league. He still knows how to you know, separate. He's got great hands. He is a smart football player. I mean, I still got him as a top 30 player in the league. I think some people would have him lower. I've got him at 28. I loved what Devontae Adams showed last year for Vegas. Even with bad quarterback play, he is still showing that he is an elite talent at the receiver position, and I got him at 28. Number 27, I got Jamar Chase. When Jamar Chase came on the list, I think he was at like number 48 on the NFLs. I was like, yeah, I got to do this video. This is, this is bad. When did we start disrespecting Jamar Chase? Like, I know he didn't have Joe Burrow last year, and I know he had a hip injury the year prior. But when he's been on the field, the guy is a electric route runner. He's got some of the best speed in all of football and is pretty impossible to get after the catch. He's got reliable hands. He's got incredible footwork. Like, what more do you want from a wide receiver? Jamar Chase is an elite wide receiver. I still have him as, I want to say, my number three wide receiver in football right now. I mean, I think he is heavily disrespected around the league right now. Uh, I've got him at number 27. At number 26, we got Travis Kelsey. This is another guy that was on the way down. You didn't really see. I mean, there were times last year where it's like, where's Travis Kelsey? Like, you need him. He showed up when it mattered, though. He is still like a – he's just that guy. You get him the ball in the middle of the field and – good things are going to happen. He just knows how to, he just has this gravity towards him where defenders are always watching him. And he just, you give him the ball, he's going to make stuff happen. He's a very reliable tight end. One of the best tight ends of all time. I've got him at number two. I still think Gronk is better because of the blocking. That's what he doesn't offer, but I still think he's a top 30 player in the league. Um, And he's, He's the best tight end in football, and I don't think it's particularly close. At number 25, we got Tristan Wirfs. I take it back. I said the Jamar Chase reason was why I did this video. It wasn't. It was Tristan Wirfs coming in at 80 in the 80s. What NFL was were we watching that Tristan Wirfs is that low? Like, are you serious? Tristan Wirfs is a stonewall at the left tackle position. He moved over to left tackle from the right tackle position. There were concerns on how he was going to play. He answered every single call. He was absolutely fantastic. One of the best pass blockers in all football. Strong anchor. Hand placement is elite. Everything you want from him at that position, he did with excellence. He was fantastic. He's a great run blocker, great pass blocker, and an absolutely absurd that the NFL ranked him that low. I got him as a top 25 player on the NFL, and I got him sitting in that 25th spot. At 24, we got Dexter Lawrence, Sexy Dexy. I mean, he's fantastic. He has been one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL over the last couple of seasons, really taking that step up where he has become a dynamic run defender and a really good pass rusher as well. Not really a lot to discredit here. He is one of the best players at his position in all of football. I don't really think it's up for debate. Unless you're debating Jets fans, I got Quinnen Williams ahead of Dexter Lawrence just slightly. Quinnen Williams is a freak athlete who has the pass rush upside. He also is, I think, a little bit better as a run defender. While Lawrence is better as a pass rusher, Williams is better as a run defender, but I think he offers a little bit more to the pass defense than Lawrence does to the run defense. 
So I think that outweighs it a little bit. They are so close to each other as the second best defensive tackle in football now. Um, I lean Quentin Williams, though. I think he is one of the most dynamic athletes, one of the most powerful defensive tackles in all of football, and I've got him number 23. Number 22, we got CeeDee Lamb. This is my wide receiver, too. I thought I was low on CD Lamb coming into the year. I was like, people are saying he's going to have this major year. Stop the hype. It's not happening. We haven't seen it. I was wrong. CD Lamb was fantastic last year. Uh, the speed is there, the quickness is there. The hands were incredible. He was fantastic for the Cowboys last year. Everything that I was saying, I was wrong on. And he is my number 22 player in the league. One of the most dynamic weapons in all of football. Dallas. Pay the man. I got him at number 22. At number 21, we got Panay Sewell, the second best tackle in all of football. I mean, this guy is an athletic freak who moves unbelievably well for his position at the in terms of run blocking. But on top of that, he's just a really sure pass blocker. He's got incredible anchor, incredible quickness, moves incredibly well. I mean, there's there's not enough positive things to say about Panay Sewell. I think he's the best right tackle in all of football. Don't think it's particularly close, to be honest. And I like Tristan Wirfs. He's on the left side. In terms of right tackles, Panay Sewell is the best in the NFL. I got him at 21. At number 20, we got Roquan Smith. Um, yeah, this guy is elite at the linebacker position. He moved... His coverage was very, very good. He is a reliable tackler. He is a smart football player as well with good football IQ who reads things pre-snap really well. Huge addition that the Ravens were able to add, and they paid him a lot of money, and he has been worth the money that they paid him. I've got him as the 20th ranked player in the NFL going into the 2024 season. Number 19, we got Laramie Tunsil, another guy that the NFL was really low on. Um He's just been fantastic for Houston. A really strong left tackle. It's hard to come by. He's got big hands. He's got incredible movement abilities as well. And he's just one of the most reliable pass blockers in all of football. I got him at 19. I think he is a generational, borderline, almost like left tackle player. He is an elite talent at the position. I got him at 19. Number 18, we got Patrick Sertan, the only Bronco on this list. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the NFL did him dirty putting him in the 60s. I get it, but like he is so technically sound, so smooth in terms of his movements. He's a lockdown corner. We can look at the first half of the season where Denver was a disaster. Patrick Sertan was, he had some down games. Patrick Sertan has, he bounced back. He is one of the best corners in all of football. I have him as CB3. I think he has been slept on heavily. I still think he's a top 20 player in the league. I would take him. If the NFL did a redraft for every player, I think he would be a borderline first-round pick, uh, regardless of position. I got him at 18. At 17, we got Jalen Johnson. Now, when he's on the field, he is one of the best corners in all of football, was an all-pro last year. He showed the coverage abilities, the off-man zone abilities. He also showed his ball skills at an elite level. He just hasn't been able to stay fully healthy, but I think he probably wouldn't have made my top 100 coming into the year last year, truthfully. He's my number 17 player coming into this upcoming year. So that should just go to show you how freaking good of a season he had. And I think he's on the rise. I think he's going to continue this if he can stay on the field. And I got him at number 17. At number 16, we got Fred Warner. Linebacker, I'm just a little bit lower on. Um, he is the best linebacker. There aren't any other linebackers ahead of him. Run defense, elite. Coverage, elite. Tackling, elite. Uh, he's elite in every phase of the game at the linebacker position. His movement, he played safety at BYU, converted to linebacker, and he has been absolutely incredible for San Francisco. One of the best players in the NFL, and I've got him at 16. Number 15, we got his teammate in Nick Bosa, who is a dynamic edge rusher who moves incredibly well. Uh, another guy that's just very powerful, who's got an incredible burst off the line of scrimmage with an elite array of pass rush moves. Not a lot of positive or not a lot of negative things to say about Nick Bosa. I got him coming in at number 15 
And um, I mean, I think he is one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. Number 14, we got Chris Jones. Chris Jones is now the clear best defensive tackle in the NFL at this point. I want to say he had 15 sacks last year from the interior. That doesn't happen. You don't see stuff like that happen very often. This guy is a defensive player of the year candidate each and every year. He's a lead in his position. I mean, he moves well. He's powerful. He's quick. He's got uh, pass rush moves. He does a lot of things incredibly well. He's a borderline top 10 player in the league for me. I've got him at number 14. At number 13, we've got Tyreek Hill. I forgot about Tyreek Hill. So Jamar Chase is wide receiver four. CeeDee Lamb's wide receiver three. Tyreek Hill, wide receiver two. I mean, the speed speed kills. And that's like all I have to say about Tyreek Hill. You can't stop him. The speed is absolutely elite. He just is untackleable at times. You get in the ball in space, he's going to make things happen. He, he's going to hit 2,000 yards one of these days because of his yard after the catch upside. I got him at 13. I think that's about the amount of kids he has. I think that's a fair range for Tyreek Hill. At number 12, we got Max Crosby. I think I, I have him as the third best edge rusher in football, if I'm remembering this list correctly. Um, we don't watch a lot of Raiders games because – why would we? The Raiders haven't been very good. Max Crosby's been elite. In every sense of the word, he's been elite. He's got quickness. He's got power. He's got speed. He's got moves. Like Max Crosby is an elite edge rusher. I've got him as the 12th best player in the NFL right now. And it's a shame that he hasn't really been able to prove it on the biggest stage. But when he's on the field, he is a dynamic weapon. I've got him at 12th. Number 11, we've got my number one corner in the league. It's Sauce Gardner. Again, don't really think it's particularly close. People are saying, oh, he only gets away with it because of holding. Well, yeah, you got to be physical at the cornerback position. That's how the position works. He has been an all-pro his first two years of his career, which it's never happened before. He is incredibly fluid in terms of his hips. He is incredibly quick as an athlete. He has got great closing speed. His ball skills are elite, but they don't show up on the box score because you can't throw the ball his way. He is just so locked down. Players cannot get a step on Sauce Gardner. He's the best corner in the NFL. I don't think it's particularly close either. Uh, Jalen Johnson, Patrick Sertain, like they're, they're number two and three. There's a gap between Sauce Gardner and those two. I've got Gardner as the 11th best player in the NFL right now. At number 10, we got Lamar Jackson. People are going to be upset about this. Lamar Jackson is a very good quarterback. A very good quarterback. He answered some questions I had about passing. He's still the fourth best quarterback in the league, in my opinion. And he just hasn't been able to prove it in the playoffs. Hasn't been able to get any momentum in the playoffs. He showed some flashes. He His accuracy still up and down. He's still dynamic as an athlete. Still a great runner. No questions there. Two-time MVP, I've got him at 10, and this is no knock on him. I just think there's better players right now. At number nine, we've got Justin Jefferson, the highest-paid receiver in the NFL. Pick your poison, what's there not to talk about? Hands, they're there for him. Um, route running, it's there. Quickness, speed, it's there. Yard after catch, it's there. He does everything elite at the wide receiver position. He is got the perfect size, speed route running combination that you look for. And I think he is the clear wide receiver one in football right now. I've got him at number nine. Number eight, we got Trent Williams, the clear best left tackle in the league. A athletic freak, really good run blocker, great pass blocker as well. Future first ballot Hall of Famer. No questions in my eyes on if he's going to get that role. He will. Um, I got him at number eight. I'm really, really excited to see what he can do. Again, didn't have the best year of his career last year, but he is still playing at an absolutely elite level at the left tackle spot, and I got him at number eight. At number seven, we got Micah Parsons, my third best edge rusher in the NFL. And I'm, yeah, third best edge, and he doesn't rush the passer on every down, which is really what's interesting because they use him a lot kind of in a – linebacker role where he drops into coverage. He only rushes the passer about 60% of the time. But when he does, he's got so many moves and quickness to just get into the backfield. Really hard player to go up against. 
um, has been an absolute revelation for this Dallas defense. Was a steal when they drafted him. Still one of the best players in the NFL. I got him at number seven. And number six, I'm going to lose a lot of you here. I still have Joe Burrow at number six. When he's on the field, I don't think there's any questioning this. Take away the first three weeks of every season, Joe Burrow plays at an MVP level. He, he was really starting to get the momentum going before he broke his thumb. He hasn't been healthy. But just two years ago, this Bengals team was in the AFC Championship game. Three years ago, they were in the Super Bowl. Why? Because Joe Burrow is an elite quarterback. He is one of the smartest quarterbacks in the league. He makes some of the best decisions with the football. He's very accurate. I'm sorry. He is still the third best quarterback in the league. People are saying, oh, he's not top five. You're, you're lying to yourself. Joe Burrow is a clear top five quarterback, and I got him at number six. And number five, we got another NFC North player in TJ Watt. Watt is an elite player. Don't get me wrong. He drops back into coverage. He's a great tackler. He's a great pass rusher. Leads the league in sacks almost every year because he's just really hard to scheme up against. Converts speed to power really well. Plays outside linebacker, so he does kind of get a bit of a start. And then he's got quickness and length. And he just knows how to finish a play. Like, that's what he does best. He finishes the play. He's the fifth best player. But... I'm a Miles Garrett guy. I think Miles Garrett is the best edge rusher in football. And it's not because of the box scores. It's not because of PFF. When you watch Browns games, he's affecting the game in more ways than you're ever going to see show up on box scores. His ability as a run defender is better than what I think we get from from TJ Watt as a run defender. On top of that, he's playing a tougher position where he has to play against the left tackle a little bit more. He's also matched up. Um, he's also a true defensive end while I see him more as an outside linebacker and TJ Watt. There's just a lot here with Miles Garrett, his run defense, his ability to stuff run lanes, his, uh, pass rush win rate. He does everything incredibly well. I think he's the best defensive player in football. I've got him at number four and number three, we got Josh Allen. I think he is an elite quarterback. The interceptions have got to come down this year because I think the narrative is starting to shift pretty quickly if they don't. There's going to be a a really interesting year. Is Josh Allen the guy or was it Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis? Because the weapons took a hit. He's got Khalil Shakir and Keon Coleman now. So what is this team going to look like? It's going to look a lot different. We're going to get to see him hopefully more on his legs, but maybe the best arm in the league. He's accurate most of the time. He's got incredible ball placement he's an incredible athlete i've got him at number three and number two i know i said i wasn't the highest on the running back position but christian mccaffrey has to be the exception because he does everything he runs he he catches he passes at times he blocks he can he can return kicks like he's the full package at the running back position first full year that we got to see him fully healthy and he was an MVP candidate. Um, a dynamic runner, can run inside, can run outside. He's got great contact balance. He's a strong runner. One of the best receiving backs in all of football. And um, he's a good blocker. He also can be a like wildcat quarterback at times. He's, a, he's an incredible player. I think he's the second best player in the league right now. I think he is, he is pound for pound. Just everything he does, super impressive. And um, that's going to do it for this video. I don't even think I have to uh, explain why Patrick Mahomes is number one. Truthfully, he's the best quarterback in the league. He's accurate. He's smart. He's got an incredible arm. He's a good athlete. He could throw the ball at a million different angles. I'm not even going to say anything else. Patrick Mahomes is the best player in the league, and it's not even it's the gap between him and number two is so substantial. It's not even close. Patrick Mahomes is the best player in football. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. Let me know what you guys think of my top 100 list. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.